hello ma'am, we are the group 7 and it's about the forensic and correctional nursing. So first is um my report is subspecialties in forensic nursing. So sexual assault nurse examiner or Sunny is a specialized nurse forensic nursing because focusing on providing compassionate care to sexual assault or rape victims. Medical legal death investigation. So there are four main types of death investigation. So nata dere ang medical legal, institution based, private, and a public health. Medical legal investigation aim to understand a natural circumstances surrounding a uh, death. And next is the role of forensic nurse. So first is the death investigator. <clears throat> forensic nurses enter the death investigation arena passing knowledge of anatomy, psychology, pharmacology, and throat development, physical examination, and health history in interviewing um, techniques. So the uh, the death investigator contribute the significantly to the understanding of the circumstances surrounding a person's demise. So next is the role of nurse coroner and coroner that investigator is selected and uh, elected and state laws do not have specific requirements of the office. So nurses may decide to run for the position. So in coroner system where the chief medical legal that investigator is elected. So nurses pwede mo run o ang mga nurses sa position of coroner or nurse coroner. So this reflects the recognition of the valuable skills in leading the overseeing medical legal aspects within the realm of the death investigation. So, napudiri ang legal nurse and attorney's legal nurse consultant. So, mauni sila ang nag bring, uh, it brings the unique skills set of the intersection of law and the health. Okay. Next is um, about clinical forensic nurse examiner. So, emergency and critical care registered nurse may be employed in EDs and critical care units as forensic nurse examiners. So, <clears throat> for registered nurse specialized specialize in forensic nursing can be found so makita sa ED so emergency department so and, and critical care unit serving a forensic nurse examiners so their expertise in, in uh, invaluable in handling cases that require immediate attention and meticulous examination so next is the care of vulnerable population so the youngest oldest and disabled population are the most vulnerable vulnerable to abuse and neglect so natadari ang child abuse and neglect child abuse and neglect are major concerns of society therefore the rule of forensic nurse examiner is a specialized imperative so next is the ultimate forensic nurse examiners caring for the geriatric population plays an important role similar to that of pediatric forensic nurses disabled population and well documented that children and elderly will disabilities are more likely to be mistreated so next is the forensic psychiatric um nurse the forensic psychiatric nurse reaches the gap between the criminal justice legal and mental health system forensic psychiatric nurses apply the nursing process to clients who await a criminal hearing or trial while maintaining a neutral objective and detached position so the forensic psychiatric nurse play a crucial role in integrating the perspective of the criminal justice like uh, criminal justice legal and the mental health system so their application of the nursing um process coupled um with a commitment of uh, neutral so it contributes that significantly to the fair and effective handling of clients awaiting legal proce proceedings. So that's all in my report. So next, see Amira. So uh, my topic is about correctional nursing. So among the many types of nurses, correctional nurses occupy a unique role in the healthcare field. So, correctional nurses are those uh, registered nurses who provide care to incarcerated people. So, incarcerated people are those are those uh, people na nasa jail, nasa prison. So, um, uh, the job duties associated with this, uh, with this profession are often similar sa mga nurses who work in hospital and other care facilities. Ang pinagkaiba lang is uh, uh, 
correctional nurses provide uh, care to people who have been charged with or sentenced for a crime. So uh, the primary goal in correctional facilities is to maintain a safe, secure, and human environment for inmates. So they play a vital role in maintaining the physical and mental health of incarcerated individuals. So that's all. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. I am Joanna Dimasaga, and today I am going to discuss about the health issues in prison population. So today's prison inmate often enters prison with healthcare issues. For the chronic and communicable diseases, the most critical healthcare issues among the incarcerated population are chronic and communicable disease. Of particular concerns are human immunodeficiency virus or HIV, hepatitis, and tuberculosis. First is HIV. The rate of HIV infection in this population is associated with high-risk behaviors, including current and previous drug use, unprotected sexual intercourse, and tattooing. Hepatitis is a serious healthcare issue in correctional facilities. Next is TB or tuberculosis, the rate of infection in correctional facilities is related to overcrowding, poor ventilation, rapid movement of inmates into and out of jail. So in 2006, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention releases general recommendations for the prevention and control of tuberculosis in correctional facilities including the following so first is tb screening for all staff members and inmates identifying persons with active tb disease and latent tb infection <coughs> so all the staff members and <coughs> inmates in the prison is required to do the TB screening if there are a active TB disease or latent existing but not developed TB, TB infection. Containment by preventing transmission and providing adequate treatment to inmates with the disease. Assessment ongoing monitoring and evaluation of screening and containment effort, collaboration between correctional facilities and public health departments. So, all staff members and inmates are required to do the, screen, the TB screening to prevent uh, to prevent of spreading uh, spreading Women in prison. In mid-year 2007, there were 65,500 mothers in jail who reported having 147,400 children under the age of 18 years. More than 4 in every 10 women in prison admit to being abused before the current imprisonment. 34% physically abused and 34% sexually abused. Almost half of the women in prison reported being under the influence of drug or alcohol at the time of the offense and using drugs months prior to the offense. Drug use and victimization combined with the stress associated with being separate from their children put incarcerated women at risk at risk for many mental and physical health problems, including the risk of HIV infection and other sexually transmitted disease. Um, for example, women who have been sexually assaulted are often reticent 
about obtaining regular gynecological examinations. The NCCHC in 2013 offers the following to guide the prevention of healthcare for women. Correctional institutions' healthcare intake procedures should include comprehensive gynecological exam. <laughs> comprehensive healthcare service should be available to incarcerated women that give special consideration to victimization among incarcerated women, counseling related to parenting issues, and accessibility to drug or alcohol treatment. <laughs> Adolescents in prison. Increasing number of adolescents are committing violent crimes and many states ha have lowered the age limit at which adolescent may be tr tried and sentenced as adult. Incarcerating adolescents in an adult population presents barriers to meet the distinct development needs of adolescents. Adolescents in an adult facility are five times more likely to be sexually assaulted three times more likely to be beaten by prison guards and more likely to be assaulted with a weapon than adolescents held in the juvenile center. So my topic is about mental issues in correctional settings. So approximately 34% of state inmates, 24% of federal inmates and 17% of jail inmates receive treatment for mental health problems. Being in prison with a mental illness such as schizophrenia, bipolar affective disorder, major depressive disorder, or personality disorder makes adjustment to incarceration extremely difficult. The great number of inmates with mental illnesses in today's prisons make it difficult to meet the needs of this population. So as a result, many people with a mental illness reside in nursing homes, residential homes, prisons, or jails. People with a mental illness are often jailed for crimes committed in response to the symptoms of mental illness. With community services declining and increasing numbers of people with mental illness being incarcerated. The criminalization of mentally ill has been become a significant politi political topic and according to and according to national alliance for the mentally ill most jail inmates with symptoms of mental illness are charged with a minor crimes a far smaller number of inmates with severe mental illness commit more serious crimes again frequently a conse consequence of either inadequate or no treatment, NAMI takes the position that many dangerous or violent acts by people with severe mental illness are a result of inappropriate or inadequate treatment. So that's all for my part. So education and forensic nursing, it is a several college and university offer a variety of programs educate uh, practitioner the direct result of the identified need and growing knowledge based for practice of this specialty area so we have the three subject for uh, for this uh, education and forensic nursing we have the basic curriculum for forensic nursing which is three subject we have the fundamental of uh, for forensic nursing and we have also the uh, no, the forensic law we have also the forensic um, science so in a forensic uh, forensic fundamental for forensic nursing 
is it is an evident for collection na adiri atong mga topic for documentation, interviewing skill, basic criminal procedure, and constitutional law. We have also ang topic nga nasulod ani nga subject is we have the scope of practice, interdisciplinary collaboration, testifying court as an expert witness. So sa forensic law, ang topic niya diri is we have the legal concept mga culpability, burden of proof, rationally for punishment, um, ano, uh, mitigate, uh, mitigating circumstance, and also defense issue, or uh, in defense issue, is not there mga justification, insanity, um, entrapment, and also uh, jurors. So, sa jur uh, forensic science, nga subject is nakasulod diri nga topic, is na itong mga collection and preservation of evidence. So, we have also um, interpretation of DNA and laboratory reports, forensic chemistry and toxicology, mga cause of death niya, blood of spatter interpretation, manner and mechanisms, injury, um, wood uh, identification, and cause pod niya. So, there's a lot of ano, a lot of ni, universities in Sagawas nga nagkuan sila o inaning nga program which is forensic nursing. So first ano niya is sa California which is the University of California at Riverside Riverside, California online. So we have also the Colorado which is the University of Colorado at Colorado Spring Beth L. College of Nursing, Colorado Spring, Colorado. So, we have also the uh, Florida, which is the University of Florida, which is online, Florida Online, Elno, Illinois, University of Illinois at Chicago, which is College of Nursing, Chicago, Illinois, which is online. We have also uh, Losaina, which is uh, Bros, uh, Brasser Parish Community College, and Basar City, Losaina. We have also sa Masako Set, which is sa Boston Nisha College, which is Cheese Nut Hill, Masako Set, um, Fitch, uh, Fitchburg State Colleges, Fitchburg Ma uh, Masako Set, um, which is online lang po siya. So, maunin ang mga university nga nagkuan ani nga program. So, that's all with my part. So, any question?